Road construction projects take an enormous amount of preparation. While the public is mostly impacted by the actual construction phase of a project, there are many components that must be addressed before any road work begins. Every road project is different. They all have their unique challenges that we have to deal with. A typical road project consists of several stages, identifying a problem, planning, funding, site preparation, and construction. Normally takes a year or so to design a project. Uh, uh, typically at least a year to acquire additional rights of way that we need, another year to move utilities, and then another year to, to build a road. So it can literally take as three, four, or five years to get something done once it's from its inception. To identify a problem, the city's engineering department regularly inspects streets and intersections in Edmond. High-tech counting devices gather traffic data and help pinpoint roadways that have a high volume of traffic. In addition, areas that experience frequent motor accidents are studied. The city also receives public input from a special traffic survey that is conducted every two years. What we did is we created a map-based tool where essentially people go in and they just drop three pins in the location uh, where they feel like traffic is a hot spot for them, where there's some, some issues. Using the information from the traffic survey and comparing it to surveys in the past, the city is able to confirm or identify new problem spots. Survey results from 2015 prompted the city to improve two busy intersections on Covell Road at Bryant and at Santa Fe. Both of those intersections were top five problems for people in our community. We went in, we made those uh, temporary interim solutions that are gonna last several years, and quite honestly, neither of those intersections have shown up again as a problem since we did that work. Once an area is deemed problematic, city engineers must make improvement plans that are feasible for that particular area. Then we start determining, well, how does it need to be improved? If it's a two-lane street right now, does it need to be four lanes? Does it need to have left turn lanes for side streets? Does it need to have medians? Uh, when we get to the intersections, do we need two left turn lanes, two through lanes, and a right turn lane? What are all the issues? So we start looking at, at the, the conceptual design. Uh, we then have to go and uh, hire an, an engineering firm to start the process, and they'll go out and do surveys uh, of the entire area and determine what's out there. Once they determine what's out there, then we can determine what can we build in the area without uh, severely impacting the properties adjoining it. While major upgrades fix current traffic issues, the city also implements changes that will have a lasting impact. It's not just traffic for five years from now or 10 years from now, but 50 years from now, what's gonna be out there? We need to make sure we design it as big as we can so that we don't have to come back out there and we probably don't have room to come back out there to widen it again. One problem the city encounters on most road projects is the lack of adequate right of way. The roadway and land on each side of the roadway is known as the right of way. It is owned and maintained by the city. The statutory right of way established when the state was created was 33 feet on each side of the road's center. To widen a road to four lanes, an 80 foot right of way on each side is necessary. Additional right-of-way allows space for extra lanes, medians, drainage structures, sidewalks, and utilities. The city will often work with property owners to purchase land for the extra right-of-way. As a right-of-way is being acquired, the city is also working on another important phase. Large construction projects are considered capital improvements. The city has two sales tax sources dedicated to fund capital improvements. One is a permanent three-quarter cent sales tax voted on by Edmond citizens in 2000. The other portion is a repurposed half-cent sales tax from 2017 that is scheduled to expire in 10 years. If the funds are available and the city council approves, a road project can be entirely city funded. This is usually good for smaller improvements that need a quick turnaround. For the large road projects, the city will apply for federal funding to use along with capital improvement funds. The more funding we can get from outside the city, the more money we have here to do other projects. As staff works on funding and design plans, the site and its expanded right-of-way is prepared. Out in these areas, we'll have underground water lines, sewer lines, 
uh, sometimes electric lines or they might be on the electric poles. We'll have uh, Cox Communications, AT&T, Oklahoma Natural Gas, as well as other private gas lines and oil lines that we don't leave under the paving. So we have to move all of those out from under where the new road's going to be. It may take as long as six months for utility companies to design their relocation plans and another three to six months to actually move their lines. For large high pressure gas lines, those can only be moved during certain times of the year. Construction is both expensive and time consuming. There are several factors that can slow construction down even longer, like inclement weather and keeping traffic flowing as construction occurs. That definitely increases the construction time when we leave roadways open to traffic while we're widening them or expanding them or, or resurfacing them because the contractor needs to make sure his workers are safe and that he has room to work. Uh, roads can always be done and built faster if we close the entire roadway, but we don't like to do that due to just the, the severe inconvenience it causes the traveling public. And then it pushes that traffic to surrounding roadways, which causes stress on them. And then we have other uh, issues on the surrounding roadway. So we try and keep it open for local traffic. You know, there's businesses there. We want to impact them as little as humanly possible. The most important element during the construction phase is safety for both drivers and workers in the construction zone. If you are driving, always follow the reduced speed limit. The city and the construction company appreciate your patience and awareness. As I like to tell people, I apologize in advance because construction is going to be a nightmare, but once it's done, it's going to be a great road to drive on.